For me as an architect, the big thing that drew me to this project was that it was this kind of funny site with all this space next to it and a heap of problems to solve. My name's John Elway. I'm the architect on this project, Cascade House. Paddington's a really interesting inner city suburb of Brisbane. It's kind of like hilly and has a lot of water flow in rainy times, but it's not too far from the city, so quite a popular place for people to live. The little cottages in Brisbane tend to sit a little bit off the ground to let the land below slope away. A lot of people tend to lift the houses and build in underneath, and it's something I try not do in my projects, and it really, by keeping them where they are, it keeps the streetscape intact. And the lucky thing about this site was that large square block with space to the side, and that meant that we could build the addition as a lean-to, sloping down the block towards the west. My name is Jack, and I'm the homeowner of Cascade House. So when we came to see the house, we were greeted with a home that was sitting on a rare square block and it was in a fairly dilapidated state. The great thing was that internally it was in pretty good condition and structurally it was in pretty good condition. So it made sense to not touch the house as it sat too much at all and let all the new work happen to the side. Coming off the footpath, you enter the house through the parking area into the meals and kitchen area. From there, you step up into a lounge entertaining space and then connect through a breezeway into the old part of the cottage. The old part of the cottage has the more private spaces in the house, so four bedrooms, the laundry and two bathrooms. Our key brief to John was to connect the house to the garden. We were a growing family, so we needed additional space and we really wanted to have grass connecting through to the living spaces so it was seamless. We wanted to be able to throw a blanket out and picnic under a tree and have dinner under the stars. The original timber cottages tend to be quite enclosed. However, in the extension, we wanted to do the opposite of that and have areas of large opening and windows so that you felt like you were part of the garden. So that was the key thing for their brief. A house that let their family connect and be part of their garden and the ground. Having the existing cottage over to one side of the square block meant that we could build down to the side of the house. But the big thing to overcome there was this was on the west. To protect the extension from that western sun, we simply extended the veranda roof on the same angle down the hillside of the block. And below that sits the various platforms that cascade down the site that contain the living area, kitchen, dining room and entry. The kitchen is quite fun, it's got a lot of kind of little nooks and crevices, like there's a hidden cabinet covered by glass that's actually under the seat of the lounge. So there's quite a bit going on with the kitchen and it was important that the appliances didn't become the focus. The fact that Fisher and Paykel and their integrated appliances seamlessly integrate with the custom joinery and the design of the home is so important to me as a designer and someone who values aesthetics. It was key that our functional pieces not only performed but that they also looked beautiful and blended in with what John and I were trying to achieve. Funny story about Fisher and Parkel is when I was at school, I got to go visit the fridge factory. So that's kind of where I first was introduced to the brand. I thought they were a good fit for this project in terms of budget, but also the appliances that were out on show were visually simple, 
and sat well in the broader context of the kitchen, sitting with the brass bench tops and the plywood cabinetry. In terms of some of the key materials that were used throughout the project, the polished concrete floor was a given. It made sense to polish a foundation that was being poured. The brass and the plywood was something that I'd been thinking about well before the renovation started and something that I wanted to bring to the table with John. One of the lovely things about only using a couple of materials on a project is the focus becomes on how you detail them well and how they sit in the space. I think Jack and I became quite fastidious about how these simple groups of materials would work together in terms of detailing. And I think that kind of comes through with a common love of materials like Jack's love of texture and my obsession with detail. The great thing about John and what I loved about his work was that he doesn't do the standard renovations. And I think throughout the project I had some really clear ideas about the materials and finishes that I wanted to bring to the project that pushed John into a new space and perhaps made him a little uncomfortable. But I think the outcome speaks for itself. For me as an architect, I am most proud that I think Jack and Oscar and their family really like living here. I think my favourite part of the project is sitting in the lounge room looking through the glass down the courtyard out to the street. <laughs>